Okay, so I'm Elsa and um, I'm from part of the fruit extension team um, at UMass and, and I'm from Stockbridge, of course. So uh, here is a little picture that I took today uh, from the vineyard uh, to show you where um, this is at, as of, you know, uh, for Amherst, and this is a Concord grape. So it might be different for people who are growing grapes, might be different depending on where you are, um, but I just based my talk basically based on what the stage was. So, all right, so for people who are growing grapes and for people who are not growing grapes, you can still, um, I guess, listen and maybe you, you grow grapes one day, so you learn from some of this. Uh, I just want to go through what I would do at this stage. Uh, so basically we are, I showed you this, these grapes here, the Concord grape that um, I took a picture of today. And you can see clearly our grape is actually at the flat leaf stage. And of course, um, at the vineyard in UMass, we have different varieties. And uh, of course, they have different stage. But for Concord, it was clearly the flat leaf stage. And so I imagine for most of you, that most of you are at between one to five inches shoots, uh, long shoots, so um, which will have impact on what you look for in terms of diseases and, um, and what you want to watch for. So I clearly, it really depends on the varieties you have, right? And then where you are located. I am going to basically tell you what you should do from, you know, from those stages that you just mentioned. We see sometimes I have those little um, code, uh, scan code, that you can just point your your telephone at on the camera, and then you can see, you can access um, the resources that I uh, mentioned. So each time I mention a resource here, it's the pocket guide that I found very useful. So I, instead of, you know, giving you the, the long website name, I just, each time I have um, a scan code like that, it's much easier for you. So you can just record it for future use. Okay, so I hope it's useful. I. I just save those um, those websites, and so I I won't repeat that, but just scan the, the scan code for for the you know to access directly the information. So here um, on this pocket guide, you have a very useful um, chart that shows you which uh, stage at which stage you, you should look for what. And so here we are, um, you are, we mostly look like we are all around the one to five inches shoot stage. So um, what we are looking for for insect would be the cutworms. So we want to watch for those. And I talked about this last time, so I won't really spend some time there on that. Um, but the diseases, uh, last time also, we talked about what we should do. We were at butt swell, we were talking about dormant spray. For sure, now we don't talk anymore about dormant spray. Uh, that would be a bad idea. But uh, we are going to think about uh, protecting the grapes from phomopsis, black rot, powdery mildew, and anthracnose. So those are the, the diseases that we should be watching for. Here, are, you can see in the legend that, um, you know, depending on the color, there is more or less, um, we worry more or less of the, about those. Phomopsis, I would say phomopsis and trachnose are like the, you know, the well, the one that were dormant uh, on the cane and we, that will start first. And of course we have powder mildew and, and black rot. So here, um, what I would do, so if I, you know, if you are growing grape for a while, you know about this. And also, you know about this, if you are growing apple, right? Because uh, I think most of the fruit team talk about Nua, right? So uh, I went today on Nua and, um, I was looking at what's going on, you know, in terms of diseases. So if you wanted to go to the website now and enter your town, uh, find out where you are at in terms of disease risk. We had a lot of rain and, um, you know, perfect condition, it's kind of warm, it's perfect condition for diseases to spread and to, to start to grow. So uh, we also have kind of the nice, uh, you know, the leaf are already out. So it's, it's good timing for, for the fungus. So if you look at those, you can see that uh, clearly phomopsis, powdery mildew, and black rot could have infected your grape um, and or could be <laughs> doing it now because it's, it was perfect. The conditions were perfect. Okay, so now it's, the weather is better. Hopefully, 
it's going to slow down, but you should do something if, especially, so I wrote here, if you have, uh, which you have, most of you, susceptible tissues, you should spray, uh, and you didn't, you sprayed more than a week ago, you should probably spray again. Here is kind of, it kind of depends what you do if you do, um, I don't think most people in, in Massachusetts, I don't know if many people are doing organic, it's very difficult. And so, um, here, what I did for each of those disease, because last time at the last twilight meeting, I you know I had a question about whether I'm going to talk about the different products, and um, I have to say that I would say always go back to you know it, it's the long list of products that are possible for you know for each of those diseases, and so here I put the resources that I would use if I was looking for uh, information about either organic. So this is the um, the New York um, uh, reference for organic. So, you know, the, the as you know, the different fungicides or pesticides will depend on the state. So you always have to check whether in Massachusetts it's uh, registered. Um, and in New England, so we have um, the New England Small Fruit Management uh, on the website of UMass. And so that one you could also scan. So those are the two things I would use to look for product. But basically, uh, just to sum up, and I'm not going to read all of the slides, but I put all the product that I um, that I thought you know <clears throat> would be relevant here. And so if you are doing conventional, you have usually a lot of options, but you are doing organic, it's much more difficult. So um, for formopsis, uh, I put here for each of those diseases, I put the option if you're doing conventional and you have very effective product for formopsis and you have you know, Mancozem, DRAM in um, MO3 and Captain in MO4. And so those um, would work, but for um, organic, um, the difficulty is to have efficacy data as you probably know and um, but for formopsis we have uh, copper based products that are effective um, sulfur based products we know usually work for fungi and are usually uh, registered for um, omri but uh, they don't always give you um, the, you know uh, for formopsis they are not always efficient uh, so same for potassium bicarbonate um, so here I put the products that are not effective, neem oil and bacillus satilis are not effective for formopsis. And then there is also product, if you look in those guides, you would see products that are, have no efficacy data at all. So uh, that's, um, and that changes, of course. So it's, it's always kind of, a, um, I would encourage you to always look for the newest data. For anthracnose, we also have a lot of uh, different products um, in different groups. Um, and I encourage you, of course, to learn about, you know, rotating your fungicide. If you don't know about that already, to make sure you don't uh, use the same group of fungicides, so you don't have resistance that develop. So, um, but for anthracnose, so we have a lot of uh, options for conventional, but we don't have a lot of option as many options again for uh, organic. Uh, even though sulfur-based products are um, considered. You know to work well but as dormant spray so uh, now we are over that time so for anthracnose it's kind of difficult if you're doing organic to have product there is a lot of registered um, organic product that for which we don't have any efficacy data so um, but they are here so I just wanted to mention that might you know you might want to try if you are uh, if you'd like to take risk but um, this is things where we need to do more research uh, for powdery mildew, um, that's a kind of an exception for organic. We have actually uh, quite a few options. For um, conventional, you have many, many options. Uh, again, make sure you rotate between groups uh, for resistance management. But for uh, OMRI, we have very effective products. Um, we have LifeGuard, we have copper-based product. We have a lot of those oil-based uh, products that work really well with powdery mildew because it kind of uh, creates a barrier on the top of the leaf. So those are really, um, like you have a lot of options for powdery mildew, which is good. Of course, uh, with grapes, you close to harvest, you want to limit the use of sulfur uh, because uh, it gives some taste to the grapes. For black rot, um, again, you have options for many options for conventional, but for MRI, uh, you have uh, copper, which is an option, but not a lot of data on other products. And I just listed the project product that are registered. 
but for which we don't have as much um, data. And so that's, I mean, that's pretty much all. I mean, I'm happy to take questions. I just wanted to give you like the, what I'm thinking about for now, like for managing the vineyard uh, here in Belchamp Town and, and uh, in, at UMass. And, um, and I'm happy to take any, any question uh, now. And so I put all this uh, scan code, I'm sorry, the scan codes here uh, so that in case you, you need to contact me or you want to follow uh, my account on Twitter and you know I post information about grapes all the time. So uh, I just take any question either in the chat or uh,